What's good everyone, my name is Zayas and today I'm here to review Kaguya-sama. Kaguya-sama is an ongoing manga which started publishing in 2015 in Young Jump. It is a sign-in manga which is mostly a rom-com, but it does have some elements of slice of life, school life, and drama involved in it as well. The author, whose pen name is Aka Akasaka, was writing light novels before he ended up switching over to manga, and afterwards he ended up writing IB, aka Instant Bullet as well as Sayonara Piano, both of which I found to be just a little bit bad. Although I didn't really like some of his works, I, I knew that he was a big School Rumble fan. He actually had written School Rumble doujins in the past. And now if I know anything, every good mangaka who writes rom-coms like School Rumble, like the other rom-com I reviewed right here, uh, this, this author does as well. And on top of this, he actually mentioned in an interview that he was a big Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei fan, and after reading this, you can definitely see the similarities in their comedy styles. In 2020, he actually ended up starting Oishi no Ko, which nowadays is very popular, so that was a massive success for him, although it wasn't really up my alley again. Unsurprisingly, I didn't really enjoy Kaguya-sama at first, but eventually I actually started to enjoy it a lot more, especially in the later parts of the series. I'll try to get all the bad out of the way really quickly because that is how the series starts. The one thing I really did not enjoy, especially at the beginning, was the whole love is war slant that they put on this thing. And it ends up just feeling like some sort of gimmick. It feels as if Akasaka is doing this so that he can make his manga unique from other rom-coms in some way by saying, oh, they're not in love, they're at war. But this kind of just makes the characters feel super annoying and condescending at times even. On top of Kaguya and Shirogane feeling like annoying middle schoolers, the jokes at the start really weren't as funny as they were later on. A lot of these just like killed the mood for me and I didn't want to read on at certain points because the jokes were that bad. Of course, not all the jokes missed at the start and you can even see a glimpse of potential with a couple chapters like chapter 6 and I think chapter 12 having some actually really funny jokes. And the art style is actually good as it has been in his previous mangas. I think all of his art is relatively above average, although I wouldn't call it masterful. Going back to the characters, Kaguya and Shirogane are supposedly super intelligent, but when you look at some of these thoughts, you just feel as if these characters are super dumb and the narrator is just saying that to make you think that. It's like, oh, I can't get this girl a coffee because if I get her a coffee, she'll think that I like her. And since I'm doing that, I'm basically confessing. And since I'm confessing, I'm losing the war. And I can't lose the war because you need to dominate or something stupid like that. And the narrator will just keep rambling on and on about these incoherent, stupid thoughts just nonstop. And there was the whole thing about how all of these students are going to become the leaders of Japan. It's like, huh? Like, because you went to a high school, you're going to become president? Yeah, good luck with that. And not to mention, there's the reoccurring how cute gag, which I feel as if the only intention of it is to piss me off. Other than Kaguya and Shirogane, Fujiwara is also introduced. But as a character, she's mostly just there to look cute and make some jokes every here and there which are funny at times, but she doesn't really have much in the way of character. When Ishigami is introduced is when I thought the series really got rolling. He is pretty much my favorite character in the series from when he was introduced all the way throughout his character arc, and he has one of the best character arcs in Kaguya. Did I say one of the best? I meant the best. He's definitely the funniest character when he's introduced. He breathes a lot of life back into the series, there's a lot of funny jokes which happen in the chapters after he gets introduced. However, there's a small drop off afterwards. But after this, the manga is never really bad. It's just sort of dull at times. This may just be me not appreciating slice of life elements in a manga as much as other people do. I'm not a huge slice of life fan. But if you do like Slice of Life, you might like this part of the manga much more than me. Around chapter 50 is when I found that the main couple start to get more likable. They started acting like normal kids living everyday lives rather than some stuck up arrogant snobs. And they had progress in their relationship. It was kind of heartwarming, the fireworks moments. There was plenty of moments past this, which I really enjoyed. One thing that I think Akka does well that many other rom-com authors are sort of afraid to do is that he 
progresses the relationship at a relatively healthy rate. And there is progress. There are a lot of heartwarming moments and it never feels as if it's really just stalling out and just slowing down for the sake of drying out the manga. If you are caught up, you'll realize that the couple has done something that most couples in manga haven't. And the manga is still going past this. Authors like to depict their characters before they enter a relationship and just end the series there. Or some authors like to depict characters after they enter a relationship and just keep on going from there. But Akka covers before and after, which I find really rare in manga actually. And by now the jokes are a lot better and there's actually a lot of really funny jokes. Especially surrounding Ishigami, Shirogane's father. I enjoyed a lot of his jokes, and even the side characters have a lot of great jokes, just all the time, Fujiwara, the main characters do too, Kaguya, and it's just pretty funny overall. Akka does also have a tendency to include memes in his manga, which is sort of not the best idea in my opinion, as memes age relatively fast and mangas will last a long time, so when you come back to read this manga, four years down the road, or as I have, like a couple years down the road, a lot of these old memes have aged very poorly. So I would probably like him to draw back on some of this, but it's not the biggest deal. Also, the, a lot of this drama in this thing feels super childlike. And although I don't want to hammer it too much because these are children and the problems they have would be more childlike, but it just doesn't sort of sit right with me at times when they're just arguing about stupid stuff like rumors. Later on in the series, the jokes do get repetitive at times. It's usually not a big deal, but sometimes the same joke will reappear three times and it'll be a little bit annoying. As we get closer to where the series is now at 233 chapters, I would say the relationship is actually one of the best parts of the series between the two main characters. They're actually super likable. Shirogain is a hard worker and he never complains about anything, he'll always try to go out of his way to help others. And Kaguya is just a person who's trying to be nice, but it's kind of hard for her to open up to the people around her. There are also a ton of characters introduced, and some of them I have more positive feelings, some of them I have more negative feelings. Maki is more so just a gay character. She does her job quite well, but there's not really that much interesting about the character aside from that. You do have to give her credit for the India scene, I'm from India and India is a horrible place. You do not want to live there and she knows that. And that part I did like. Eno is the straight man in a lot of these jokes. She'll just be the character who reacts to the gags. And although recently they're trying to develop her character more and get more into who she is, personally I don't like her very much and I hope she does not get involved in any romantic relationships. Shirogane's dad, as I mentioned earlier, a character who was introduced late, but was one of the funniest characters in the series. Kei and Hayasaka were sort of just characters who were similar to Fujiwara, who are mostly there to just look cute. Of course, they do have character moments at time, but they're pretty one-dimensional overall, just having like one thing that they're chasing in general. Lastly, Osaragi, which I feel like is one of the more overlooked characters in the series, and is actually one of my favorite girls in the series. And if she was 18, of course, I would never like her if she was 17. But when she is 18, I will like her a lot more. <laughs> also, when it comes to Kaguya's and Shirogane's relationship, it's getting very good, it's getting pretty normal, and then all of a sudden, they get interrupted by stuff like the Branch family, which I find to be such a dumb concept. I hate when they have the Branch and main family in manga. Like, your grandfathers were the same dude, dude. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the same goes for Kaguya's brother. This rivalry is just dumb. And that's just kind of how I feel about Kaguya-sama overall. There are lots of great moments where it's beautiful, there's a lot of romantic progression and stuff like that. And then there are moments where you're just like, huh? What was the author really thinking with this? And although there are highs, there are also a lot of sort of middling moments. But the further you go on in the series, the more great moments you will find and the less bad moments you will find. The relationship gets a lot smoother with a lot better dialogue. The art actually improves on top of already being good. I found that the characters' lines felt a lot sharper and the characters felt more well-defined and had more personality expressed through their character design. But if you're looking for great backgrounds, obviously don't come to Kaguya-sama, there's not much of that. Going back, to my favorite part of the series, Ishigami's character development. 
it actually kind of blindsided me. I didn't think that Ishigami would be developed as a character at first. When I first read the manga, I thought he was just there for gags. We learned soon after that Ishigami is actually one of the kindest characters in the series and goes, goes out of his way for other people, even if they don't return anything back to Ishigami. He's lived with the consequences of this for a long time, and he hasn't even cracked once. He tries not to care too much about what other people think about him. He constantly tries to improve on himself. He works out, he eats healthy, and he even manages to work up the courage for my favorite scene in the manga, where he asks out Tsubame. I felt as if the scene was super emotional, there was a lot of build up, there was a ton of tension. The scene really hit hard afterwards when you see Ishigami crying by himself alone. It fits Ishigami's character perfectly. He'll take on the brunt of the trauma just so that she doesn't have to feel uncomfortable. And then the worst part of the series comes shortly after where Ishigami mentions he plays Apex Legends and all of a sudden I don't feel bad for him because he plays a really garbage game. But anyways, uh, I think this is because Akka likes Apex Legends so he wanted to include something, a uh, part of himself in Ishigami. And the whole time while Ishigami is playing Apex Legends, Shirogane's sugar daddy Dilf, god gamer, is playing Goldeneye, like a real gamer. And in most series, I don't normally do shipping at all, but in this series, I really hope from the bottom of my heart that Osaragi and Ishigami get together. I just really hate Ino and I really like Ishigami, so I hope he isn't stuck with her. Please, Akka, if you're watching this, let them get together. Overall, at the end of the series, there's so much improvement from the beginning that I find it kind of insane. If I was just reviewing the first 100 chapters of this thing, I would hate it. But now, here we are at like 233 chapters and the series has gotten so much better. Of course, this isn't a perfect series by any means. There's still tons of things holding it back with dull moments here and there and repetitive jokes. But overall, it's actually a very, very, very solid series. And I would actually recommend this to a lot of people. I'm feeling a decent to strong 7 on this thing. And thanks everyone for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. I'm thinking of doing between JoJo's, Saltiness, and um, My Dress Up Darling next. So all those three reviews are probably coming out in the next three sometime. So look out for that. Like, subscribe, comment, everything. Thanks everyone. See you later.